Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 26 of my Algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about Descartes' rule of signs and the rational root test and how we can use both to solve equations. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so both of these are best going to be explained through the use of an example. Otherwise, sound kind of confusing. If I say that basically Descartes' rule of signs tells you the number of positive and negative roots of a function, that might be kind of complicated and a little confusing. So let me just go through an example here. And you should know what a root is, however. And if not, you're going to find out. Okay, so let's say we have a function which is x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 16x squared minus 4x plus 48. And we want to know how many different ways we can solve this equation and get a value of zero. Okay, so that is our goal. Well, what we can do is we can use Descartes' rule of signs. And what we need to do here whenever we are using it is focus on the signs of the coefficient. So here we're going to have a positive for x to the fourth. And again, another positive for x to the third. We are going to have a negative for 16x squared. Another negative for 4x and then a positive for 48. Now what we do here is we mark where the signs change. So we start off with a positive, and then we get a positive. Okay, nothing's changed. Then we get a negative. Uh-oh, something has indeed changed. So we are going to mark that change right there. Then we get another negative right here, so nothing changed. Then we get another positive. So we see there is another change right there. So there are a total of two positive roots, meaning positive values that can solve this problem that we have right here. All right, so another thing you have to refer to, however, is I'm gonna say two positive roots. However, there could also be two less than that. So we are either going to have zero or two positive roots. Now let's say we had three of these little orange lines here showing where signs changed. In that situation, we, have, we would have three positive roots, you get it, or you subtract two from the three, which tells us we are either going to have one or three positive roots. So whatever your result is, you always want to subtract two from it, and it's going to be one or the other. And I'll continue here. So we have our positive roots. Now what we need to do is find what are called our negative roots. Now for those, what we are going to do is we are going to say negative x to the fourth plus negative x to the third minus 16 negative x squared minus 4 negative x plus 48. And then we are going to simplify that down. This is going to end up being x to the fourth minus x to the third minus, and if this is at all confusing, as I finish, it will all make sense, plus 4x plus 48. All right, so now what we do is again, we mark where the signs change. So we have a positive here and then a negative, so the, ch the signs changed. Then we have another negative, sign did not change, but then we go from negative to positive, signs changed, then we have a final positive. So that means, once again, that we're gonna have zero or two negative roots. And if we go and actually figure out what the factors are, and the next part of this tutorial is actually going to show you another way to find factors. But in this situation, I'll just jump to the actual factors for this equation that we have right here. And those factors are x plus two 
and x minus 3 and x plus 4 and x minus 2. And you can see here that indeed we do have both two positive roots and two negative roots. And that is what Descartes' rule of science tells us. So that brings us to the rational root test. Now, it is going to provide a list of possible roots for a function because whenever you're trying to solve an equation, you don't want to go in there and say, okay, let's try zero, then let's try one, then let's try two. The rational root test is actually going to provide us a list of numbers to try to find our root. And it is extremely useful. So let's say we have a function, x squared minus 3x minus 10. And after I go through the rational root test, I'm going to combine this with Descartes' rule of signs to show you how to solve a really complicated equation. All right, so this is what we have here. Now, what we want to do is we first want to go and find the factors of our constant, which is this guy right here. So what are the factors of 10? And of course, they are going to be you're going to have this be plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. All right, then what we want to do is find the factors of the leading coefficient. This is the leading coefficient, and its value would be 1. All right, so what is the, this is very easy, factors of 1. And I promise the next example will be more complicated. Well, this is going to be either plus or minus one. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna find the list of rational roots, and how we're going to do that is we are going to divide our constant factors by the leading coefficient factors. And that is going to give us the values of plus or minus one over one and two over one and 5 over 1, and 10 over 1. Now what we can do is we can use these values, which I can just come in here and delete the over 1 part because that's kind of pointless. But we are going to check both the positive and negative versions of these values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, is 1 a root? And if I go and try to figure this out, I end up getting, and I'm going to put 1 into this function right here. So I'm going to get 1 squared minus 3 times 1 minus 10, which is going to give us a value of negative 12. And the answer to, is 1 a root? No. How about negative 1? Well, we can come in and check it. So we'll have negative 1 squared minus 3 times, whoops, negative 1. Minus 10 is equal to, this is negative 6. So is negative 1 a root? No. All right. How about 2? Well, the answer is, I'm just going to jump to the chase here. The answer also is no for that. How about negative 2? And if I go negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 minus 10 well, that is going to equal zero. So is it a root? Yes. And also we will find that if we put five inside of here and calculate that out, that this is indeed also going to be a root. So really awesome stuff. And so we found our root. And Descartes' rule of signs actually tells us we can stop now because we found our two roots and a quartz root of signs tells us there are only two. So there you go. And that is going to give us a final answer of the factors are x plus two times x minus five. And there we are, we found our factors for our formula right here. So now to finish this off, I'm gonna combine both the rational root test and Descartes' rule of signs with some of the other awesome things you have already learned in this tutorial to solve a more complicated equation. So what are we gonna be working with this time? Well, I'm gonna say I wanna solve 2x to the third minus 12x squared plus 
x minus 25. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to find the number of positive roots. So as I go through this, how many times am I changing signs? Well, I'm changing signs right here. And then I'm changing signs again right here. And then I'm changing signs again right here. So that means I have either what? Three or, remember, subtract two, one positive root. Okay, so now we got to do the negative test. So this is going to be negative 2x to the third minus, just going and doing the math here ahead of time. So this is going to be negative 15x minus 25. So how many negative roots do I have? None. The signs for every single one of these is negative. So there are no negative roots. All right, so that tells us we're either going to be looking for one root or three roots. And that brings us to the rational root test. So what are we going to do? We are going to look for our leading coefficient factors. And that is going to be this guy right here. And let's just go leading factors. And the leading factors are going to be plus or do I need to do minus? No, I do not because there are no negatives. So I'm only going to do plus and that's going to be plus one and two. Then I need to find our constant factors and that are or those are going to be plus again. We're going to one and five and 25. So we got those. And let me tell you, this is going to be a complex type of solution that we're going to work with here. So our list of rational roots, so we'll go rational roots are going to be, and remember, you're going to put your constant factors, and the constant I'm referring to is this, by the way, negative 25. So our constant factor over top of our leading factors. And that is going to give us rational roots of 1, 5, 25, 1 half, 5 over 2, and 25 over 2. And again, we can ignore negatives because there are no negatives. Okay, so roots. Let's go and test them. So is, we can just go root like this with a question mark. Is 1 a root? Well, we can come in here and we could say 2 times 1 to the third minus 12 times 1 squared plus 15 times 1 minus 25. And that is equal to negative 20. So that is not a root. We know that's true. Okay, then we can go 5, test it. So that's going to be 2 times 5 to the third minus 12 and 5 squared plus 15 times 5 minus 25. And that equals 0. So yes, 5 is a root. Now we can go and cut to the chase and solve this problem really quick by using the quadratic equation because you're super awesome smart. So what we're going to do is we're going to say x minus 5. We know that this is a factor. And then we can go 2x to the third minus 12x squared plus 15x minus 25. And we can go and divide. We're not using synthetic division. We're just using regular old division. I got ahead of myself there. And so what we're going to have to do is multiply this to get 2x squared, which is going to give us 2x to the third. And we're going to change the sign on this. And this is going to give us 10x squared. And again, we are going to change the sign on this. And if we go and sum this up, you'll get 2x to the squared plus 
15x minus 25. And if we multiply this times 2x, that is going to give us 2x squared, change the sign, minus 10x like this. And that will leave us with a 5x minus 25. And this would, if we go and add 5 up here, that gives us, change the sign, negative 5x plus 25. And that is equal to 0. So we have our quadratic equation. We can use our quadratic formula on it to solve it. So what is our quadratic formula? Negative b plus or minus. This is going to be b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. All right, let's solve this. So this is going to be 2 plus or minus and 4 minus 4 times 2 times 5 divided by 4. And that means, uh-oh, we are going to have a negative number here. So what does that mean? It's imaginary, which is super really cool. Okay, so let's go and figure it out. Um, I can just do it right here. This is going to end up being equal to 2 plus, and we will have our imaginary number. And this is divided by 4, which is going to end up being equal to 2 plus 6 i divided by 4 and this is going to be equal to our final other factors here is 2 or 1 half plus 3 i over 2 and then we're also going to have will it fit 1 half yes it does good minus 3 i over 2. So there you go, all kinds of crazy stuff. Hopefully you found that interesting. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.